Let's go ahead and get the wheels off of this baby because I want to get into the gear cases. I'm just putting these jack stands in temporarily so I can let this down, take the weight off and spin this out of the way. Okay, that might be good enough. Yeah, those are clear. Okay, these are clear, so I'm just gonna lift this pin and pull this out of the way. Then when I take the wheel off, this won't be in the way. It wobbled a little. I would imagine that's gonna be heavy. Oh, oh that's not bad at all. I thought they'd be way heavier. But they're not. This is gonna be awesome. I think we're even gonna open that up today. Just to see the change, just to see the drive. I love the mechanism in there. And they are pretty light. There we go. Nice. Okay, now. We're gonna see cool stuff because we're gonna take that cover off. Oh, oh, right in the oil. And it didn't drip, okay. So, there is a bumper. And look at that chain. I love the smell of that stuff. So he's pretty loose. Oh, here's the brake. We can fix the brake too then. That'll be nice. Cool. This is the adjuster. I love it. I we love will it. go to the other side and get the other side apart, which is the side that is slipping. Same thing. Same brake here. I don't see anything broken. Which is good. Okay. And I do have the manual for this. Look, look at all that oil. But, oh, you can see it here. It looks like the chain came off. That would be a hell of a binder. I am thinking that we're just need to do some adjusting. Okay, we're just gonna work on getting this off of there, cleaning everything up, and checking where we are with adjustment. I think we'll go through and we'll grind this out and we'll re-weld that, make that a little bit better weld on there. But with this, we can see how much we have left. Oh yeah, there's plenty there. There's a good, there's a good half inch there yet. That's good. That went fast. 
When that rag gets caught in there, it goes pretty quick. That's why you want to keep any loose hanging clothes or, or necklaces or jewelry or even long hair out of the way of that grinder. It'll get you fast. Okay, so to make this break better, we, we just turn this in, but it's a little bit stiff, so we're gonna try and get some. Oh yeah. It seems like it, like, it's, like I go to here, it seems like it's a nice camo. Or, we'll check it like that. I can, I can see when you take off pressure, the oil sucks in, and then when you uh, put on pressure, the oil shoots out from under the pads. Under the pads? Oh, okay. So yeah. Like Alright, so now after going over everything, I've got the brakes are adjusted and they work. They're clamping on a rotor. I've got all of the fluids drained that had water in them. I'm not going to do the hydraulic oil because that looks really good. And the chains have plenty of adjustment left, so we're really good there. So we need to adjust the levers so that when they zero out, the wheels don't turn. Verify that the emergency brake is now working. Things are looking good. Finally, for the chains, the tensioning on the chains, we're gonna put the tension where I think it should be. We're only gonna lock the locks down to 10 foot-pounds. And this is per the manual. Then we're gonna ease the the drive forward and backwards and let that move. Oh yeah, it hits that chain. Now we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. We're gonna put this cover on. Probably just two bolts is enough. And then we'll also adjust this till I think it's tight. Lock these down to the 10 foot pounds and then leave that little gap like that. And then we'll be good. The other way they say to do it is to check the tension at zero. 90, 180, 270, and 360. Because the left side drifts, we get the left side spins, we need to go in and we need to make our adjustments here. So we wanna back off um, A, these two. Right? And I'm, I'm looking at a manual, so. And then it says, check for free play in the neutralizer tube. And if there's free play, no, there's none then you would adjust these two. So now, now we need to start the engine. And with the engine running, I have to adjust these two bolts, one way or the other, to get that to stop spinning. Once I start it up, I'll put the camera outside to monitor that hub, and then we'll watch. I'll just be making adjustments here. So everything is good, I'm just gonna have to get in under this cover and figure out why the brakes don't grab. Otherwise, everything is perfect. So I gotta knock that over, take that out, and then I can, I have the chains all the way slack, so I should be able to pull that off. We'll see. I'm not certain. But, what are you gonna do? You're not certain? Take it apart and become certain. <laughs> Oh my. No, it's not enough, it's caught right there. What do we got here? Oh. Mm -hmm. Everything is close. Okay, so right here is the other bolt for the lower hanger for that caliper holder. Oh, she's pretty glued in there. All right, I almost got it out of here. It's just over this chain, and I just need to give it some wiggles. There's this puzzle here, there's a little puzzle. Okay, 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 hey, we're getting there. We're getting there. Hey, there it is. All right, now I wanna get that brake caliper stuff out of there. Oh, I still got a nut on the back of this one. The upper one is out. Okay. 
So I need to take the nut all the way off on that one. So right here. Yeah, I'm gonna have to go under there. All right, hold on. There we go, there we go, here we go. Got it, got it, you got the whole braking system. We're gonna get a light and show you how this works. We'll take it all apart and then we'll probably end up getting new pads. And I may seem a little bit in high speed, but I haven't eaten all day, which is dumb. And there's one pad out. So these balls, I don't know if they come with the pad, but we don't want to lose them. Okay, and then we just we take this guy out. All right, so he goes with the balls that way. Okay. Okay. And then the other pad, yeah, these are wiped out. So that's the carrier. So all we gotta do is take one off. The carrier looks good. I don't see any tremendous wear down there. All right, that's it. We're gonna look for pads and then I'll get the other side out. But I think now that that whole assembly is out of there, I should be able to get the rotor out of it pretty easy. We got the brake pads today. The difference between the pads is one has a set of molded in kind of uh, spheres or half balls and this one has none. So we know that the, the half balls go on this side because when the system works, it wedges that pad out using the set of, of balls. Then there's a dent for this pin. So you go like that. So now we have our our pad. And if you look, that's a pretty big gap for this rotor. And that really backs off. That's asking a lot. So we're just making sure that they're captive in there, and they are. And they never were never took them out on this side so we can just go through put our washer and our lock nut on all right that's tight okay now I'm gonna do the same to the other one so I'm getting ready to put the brakes back in. So I have some paper towel inside and I'm just cleaning off this surface. I need to make sure that gets sealed up so that we don't get any water coming in or oil coming out. It's a paper towel. Listen to that rain. Now this side did have two spacers right here. So these two spacers, or washers, whatever you want to call them, we're here to space that brake rotor from hitting that face. Woohoo! I love it. There we go. Yuck. Okay, so I cleaned off the studs and I cleaned off the faces. So I'm just gonna fill everything up with black RTV. We're just pumping it in there. It's probably coming out the other side, but I don't care. We have to make sure a few things happen. This gets on the right side of the business, which is like that. And these get in those holes. So I'm going in here like so. I'm sure this is going to fail somewhere along the line. Okay, and I barely got it. It's barely hooked. So you can see it's just setting in there. Now I'll get the rotor, and we have to try and get the rotor open without this dropping out, and keep the shims in there. And we're putting the shims in. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna get a screwdriver. And I know my spacers are in there, so that's good. So we need to find another 
pan. Oh, you know what? We'll go right like this. Now, there's the hole. Okay. No, stay in the hole. Okay, that one's in there. This one is where? There we go. Okay, there it is. The main part was getting that rotor in between the brake pads because the lever kept falling. If you attach your actuating lever like that, it actually will keep the brakes open, which is super helpful. So I just got to go back there now, goop up those holes and tighten that all up. That's not all the way tight, so we need to come back to that. Let's go up. So right now I'm just throwing a bunch of goop up there, really coating that up. I said gooped up in there, okay. Then we're gonna goop up this washer with some goop. Lots of goop going on here. That washer all full of yuck on there. And then my perfect idea was putting this piece of toweling on there so it holds the nut. I could kind of push that. Oh, oh, what the hell? What just happened here? Okay, now we can get that to go in. There we go. There we go. Now, let's see if we can get this started just a little. That worked. Yep, that worked. And we are slowly tightening. Nice. Yep, that's really good. I'm gonna bring it down, get in the cab, tighten it up, put that actuator on there, and then I'll come back. So there's really nothing tricky that's gonna be happening now. It's the tricky part was maneuvering the rotor into the brake caliper and then getting the whole thing to kind of go in at once. The whole caliper assembly has to pull out. Then you have to set the actuator lever so it's neutral, so it's not engaging those balls. Then what you could do is slide that rotor in and then you can push the whole thing on at once. It's a little bit tricky, but it can be done. It can be done. All right, I'm gonna get at it. I'm gonna get these other two things done. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tighten up the rotor, lock it all down, and then I'll come back. Tricky part's all done. Woo. All right, so I just went through, I put on new pads, left the same rotors, they're not bad. It's not like they're warped, you're never gonna notice. Uh, put the caliper brackets on, cleaned up everything really good, degreased, then RTV, and then we tightened everything up. So then what I had to do up there was I adjusted the brake, the emergency brake, and it has a knob on the end, and I don't know if I remember showing it, but it has a knob that you could spin. So I just spun it until it kind of gave me resistance and I had a good cam over effect. Okay, that's the brakes. Ha! That's the brakes. Okay. Oh, that's tight. Now, well, this is tighter here. The top is tighter. We'll go with that. We're not going to crank this down. We're going to adjust the brakes, verify that everything spins. Well, tension this, if this doesn't move at all, then I'd say our tension is good. And we'll be ready to fill this, uh, drill all these out or clean up the threads and then kind of pop this out, I guess. And then we can get this all sealed up and fill it with oil. This side brake held really good. The other side did not. So I may have to do some adjusting. Now we're gonna really bear down on these, lock them down tight, lock up our tensioners and be good. Oh. That might be broke. Oh, oh no. Guess what? Oh wow. Well, that had to break. You could see it was just, it was already broke. It's just barely holding. Yeah, that probably needed to break. Now we got a bigger job. Oh well. All right, well, you all saw that broke, and I'm not wiping the tears from my eyes because that eh, job's a job, should be fun. 
I just hope to get it out of here. I gotta do brakes on a dump truck. Okay, let's get ripping. Never go forget. Ba 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 baby, you just ain't seen nothing no, 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 yet. You ain't been around. Right here is the master. Right here is the master link. Did I get lucky? I don't have to go this far. Maybe I didn't even need to go that far. Oh boy. All right, well, we're gonna fix that. You can see it looks like a hex. So we're gonna drive it that way. I'll probably throw this on the mill and just make a big enough recess so that that head can fit right in there. All right, let's take a look at this a little bit more and figure out a game plan. Well, I didn't even have it on, but I definitely melted those heads. So I'm gonna grind that down a little bit and then see how it looks. All right, so we're gonna work this piece back in now that we've got this welded up. So it goes into here and it grabs, there's a couple of ears up here that this has to grab that fits in here and then it pulls it forward and back, pulls this. Oh, come back here, you. <laughs> forward and back. So it's like right there. Should be pretty easy. Okay, that's captured. That's all the way forward though. I'm gonna bring the master link right up here so it's easy to put in. Yeah, she's darn close to being, but we got, we got room. So we'll get this on and then we'll get the brake in. Well, after a few hours of doing some machining, some welding, it's all back together again. All right, I'm just gonna crack this open to see if there's any moisture on the bottom because oil floats on water. So I don't know how this is gonna go, so I'm gonna let everybody watch in case I get a bath. Ooh, that looks nice and red. Whoa, 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 whoa. That looks really nice and red. Mmm. Looked really red and it looks, you know, it's a little bit dark, but it is definitely, you can see red and I'll show you. You can see it right there in the pan. That was something that came down. So it is red. That's good. We just got to figure out they call for ATF2 and they did the hydraulics in 2018. I'm questioning whether it was ATF2 or if it's ATF4. All right, so we have differential filled. We have no water in the hydraulic tank. We have the engine oil drained and filled. So now all we have to do is the crankcases and I think we can put it down and give it a shot. All right, here we go.
Well, it looks like we're gonna have to put some helicoils in. This is a 3 8 bolt, and it goes right in. Now, a while back, I went to Green Bay for an auction, and I actually got a 3 8 helicoil kit. And this one has everything I need. It's got the drill, the insert tool, and the tip breaker offer. So I've got this helicoil I'm gonna put in there. It's gonna be perfect. A little air tool oil. I don't have any cutting fluid. And we'll just run this guy in there. And now we have a perfect thread. Nice. However, these guys here. All right, well, we got the two repaired that we want repaired. That's a success. I picked up this tube of blue RTV silicone from Permatex. I didn't really run around looking for the black. The blue will work. We just need to get it to seal the gear lube that's gonna be in this case. So I'm gonna cut this tip off, probably run this about a quarter inch, which is about the max bead. And then I'll put this cover on. I've already gone over and put brake cleaner on here and wipe this all down real good. So let's use my uh, crescent with scissors. It's pretty nice. Let's see if I can keep from cutting my hand. Let's we'll put a nice tall bead on here. Now this is very, you know, it's pitted and it's got some humps in it that I tried to straighten out. But I'm believing that this is really gonna save the day. Okay. Right. Some of the holes are 3 8 some of them are 5 16 that's the X's are 3 8 And here it requires four short ones. Let's grab a 3 8 Okay, we're gonna put this guy in. Like so, raise him up. And this is 3 8 right here. <laughs> this is a lot. This is a lot. This is gonna be a mess. Don't be a hater. And inside here, it's just that big gear drive. So we're not worried about the Permatex plugging up any lubrication holes or breaking down in there. But if any, any Permatex sloughs off and goes into the gears, we're gonna be just fine. Cause that chain, that'll chew that, that'll chew this Permatex up. I don't know why I bought grade eight hardware from Fleet Farm, but I did. All right, so man, I hate to fricking do anything to it other than, you know, this, but that's gonna look worse than the other stuff. Right, I mean, look at that. It looks beautiful, it's blue. Definitely got a lot on there. <laughs> All right, now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go through, maybe put it in a time lapse and just whip through all this. Again, I'm using Permatex Blue in a caulk tube. I put in helicoils where the threads were bad. So we're just gonna go around now. Everything's been cleaned off. We're gonna fit our hardware and then we're just gonna get these covers on. All right, time lapse, music, let's get this thing done. Shitty car, but we hit the road. Doesn't matter where we go and destination or no. When I want it, then I want it, yeah, I want it, oh, I want it, let's go. Look around, where's the people at? I want a taste of the good life, hit me with it right now, I'm in it. Cause when I want it, then I want it, yeah, I want it, oh, I want it, let's go. And I won't look back, yeah, I don't care about the bad shit back home. It's Cincinnati, baby. Well, 
as you can see, I've got the Permatex in, I've got the covers on, and then I'll let it sit for 24 hours and then fill up the chain reservoirs. And that should be it. I'll put the tires on and we'll get this baby out of here and then tomorrow I'll fill up the reservoirs. All right, today's a big day. We're gonna run our 90 weight oil into this reservoir to this level. So I'm gonna fill here and wait until it comes out down here. Why is she coming off the front? Ooh, I don't like that at all. All right, well, I guess that's it. That's as low as we're going. If I fall off of this, it's gonna make a big mess. Well, at least it's 50 degrees. Okay, I'm looking in there and it is like right there. So we're really close. Still not coming up, but I know it's close. Yep, there it is, right there. There it is. Good, so I'm gonna put the plug in and I'm gonna just add a little bit more so we know we're there. That is beautiful. Ooh, that plug is not, that's not good. That was like all the way in. Well, maybe it'll tighten up. Yep, it's tightening up. It's pretty far in. All right, I'm gonna just add a little okay. extra. I'm gonna add like one funnel full. It's not like we're going to flood or we have all this room to expand and contract inside there for air. All right, let's put a little more and then we'll go to the other side. Side one done, side two next. Then we put on the wheel spacers, the wheels, and we head on out of here. This is, I'm getting excited. Pick up these forks. Is this my garbage can? Huh? Is this my garbage can? I don't know. That garbage can was mine. Okay, Plain. I didn't do it on purpose. <laughs> Just somehow got it.
I don't know if the shop being messy like this signifies a good project that turned out well and took a long time or a failure. But I can tell you this much, I pulled out all the stops and they got an awesome running New Holland L775 Skipster. Lots of projects coming up for that baby in the spring.